Okay, just a quickie on taking apart the Chearson CX220. Um, for those that don't know, um, you should know how to take the props off. Now, the silver ones are normally threaded. So, undo the left hand. The black ones are um, left hand threaded. Uh, so, you turn them to the right. If you've got a stubborn prop, best not to try and force it off. Um, if you use the uh, supplied little spanner, you can ease underneath there and lever against the little motor splines. Just be gentle and patient and it just pops off nice and easy. <coughs> just like that. Now right, shut the video, get the other props off and move on to the next bit. Now, I should have mentioned the purpose of doing this, otherwise I'm going to try and establish if we can control the tilt, manually control the tilt of a gimbal from the, the radio transmitter. Uh, that means I've got to take it apart and see uh, which receiver uh, ports do what. Taking this off really easy, little flat blade screwdriver, don't, don't um, rip the rubber apart trying to take them out, they come out really really easy. Um, which is uh, not necessarily a good thing if you've got a 350 pound GoPro hanging on it. Anyway, right, that comes off nice and easy. Uh, this is where this lovely little supplied model tool is very useful. Uh, as we can just get the, uh, the correct piece into there. And remove the screws, put them nice and safe out of the way. Preferably if, you, uh, if you've got an open bench without a closed back like uh, like that one over there, and then put your little screws in a separate little tray somewhere. All right, that comes off really easy. That goes up the back there. Uh, next is the legs. These are lovely little thumb screws. I think that's a great improvement over the DJI in this case, in that um, if you want to backpack it and take it elsewhere, this makes it really easy to take apart and put back together. You just basically need your finger and thumb and you need that little spanner to remove and replace the props, which um, literally take 60 seconds on the props. And the same one here, so in a couple of minutes you can have a flat packed quad up into a flying quad in the field. So this would go in your rucksack or, um, or in your handbag. <laughs> Mustn't be sexist, must we? No. Right, okay. <clears throat> so that's that. Back to um, bare bones from there. So I'm going to touch that out of the way, getting it on my nerves. Um, then we've got the same again, what we've got here is two sizes of thread, strangely. You have three screws in, uh, in each arm of, of that size. There's one, two, three. And then there's a little one, which we use the other end of this for, uh, in there. Uh, and then there is, in here, that single little screw, Phillips screw, right there. Posi drive Phillips, whatever you call them. That has to come out as well. Uh, and then the whole thing just comes apart. Okay, last little screw out of here. Now, it's just in the front. Goes up into that phony GPS holder. Little Phillips or Posi drive. That's done. And it should now. Out of the way. That should now just come off. Just pull that back a bit and get it all in shot. Come off like that. Out harm's way. <clears throat> and then you can see all the internals and everything there. That's where our antenna comes down here and dangles out underneath there. 
uh, receiver again because it was out of shot a second ago and the GPS unit there these are the receiver outputs that come out into the inputs uh, which are clearly marked on here um, as uh, aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder and then you have one, two, three, four so there are um, uh, there's four inputs on here there's only three auxiliary outputs on here um, if you can see those numbers are upside down let's put them up the right way might help you a little bit you can see them there uh, so the ones that control the flight are aileron elevator throttle and rudder uh, now one or two of these are going to control the uh, mode switches uh, to enable the GPS mode, the manual mode etc etc um, so I want to test for which of these do that um, and uh, it may be a single channel that does that and uh, the second switch simply modifies the actions of the uh, the first one okay I just want to show you something that may be um, make life a bit easier at first I thought they'd bundled all the channels um, signal outputs into single solid uh, five pin or six pin flat rod as opposed to having separate ones for each like these but look on closer inspection it looks like they have the three for the um, elevator uh, throttle and rudder uh, on one three pin connector and then the auxiliary channels one two three are on this so all I need to do is remove this which will disable the mode switch on the uh, flight controller but that will be temporary um, just so I can test it out without having to disconnect the control channels and that, that would be great and it's the same buried down deep in here what we okay what I've done here is uh, initially hooked up a um, servo onto auxiliary channel one which is there I've removed this three pin connector uh, which is on there black to the left uh, that's basically three signal wires not uh, signal positive and negative like a normal cable is so temporarily I've removed that and I shall power it up and see which controls on the flight controller we'll activate this whoops <laughs> bit of camera trouble yes which controls on there will activate this servo and that will give me a good idea where to start so spare battery power up transmit they're on Yes, my next task is going to be to disable the beeping on that transmitter because that drives me insane. I don't even know what it means. That's uh, still, I'm sure someone will enlighten me. I don't really care what it means, to be honest. I don't need it. Right, okay, I'm going to check the mode switch here and see what we get. Right, so that is clearly on switch A giving me some different positions so we know that auxiliary one is at least on switch A but I also want to check to see if switch B is simply a modifier for switch A on channel one and it does nothing there it is well that's that's very good news actually now I've got switch um, I just want to show you this I'll try and put this here if I can don't know if it's all in shot I shall try to get it all in shot there we go right okay what I'm doing there is I'll put both switches back to zero if you see a switch uh, a three position switch center position uh, or position one position two uh, so it's sending out different PWM signals uh, to the flight controller now switch B does nothing when switch A is in zero however when you've got switch A in one 
and you use switch B, all switch B does, it's not a separate channel, it's on the same channel, it just modifies its output, if you can see that. And again, in position 2 on switch A, switch B simply modifies the output slightly. So basically the flight controller can recognise the five different flight modes from different outputs. Um, uh, uh, in combination with switch A and switch B controlling auxiliary channel 1 which is great news because that means we've got two spare channels and I'm almost willing to bet I haven't tried this yet but I'm willing to bet that if I switch this over to auxiliary channel 2 you can hear the servo activate then so it's powered up um, I'm willing to bet that one of these dials on here will control it. Oh, look at that. That was a good guess. So switch, uh, sorry, auxiliary channel 2 is, ironically on here, auxiliary 1 on the dial. And 2 will do nothing on there. But I'm also willing to bet that if I switch this servo onto auxiliary channel 3 that auxiliary A will work that and sure enough it does however with a gimbal I've never seen the the benefit of being able to control tilt and roll angle somebody must have a use for that I've never figured out what tilt yes because you can fly over the top of something and as you're flying over the top rotate your channel uh, your, your dial and pan the camera down as you're doing it so you can get a, a really nice aerial view so this is sweet it will simply use a male to male servo lead which will go on to auxiliary 2 and come out of the bottom of the CX20 there is a hole in the bottom by the way which looks like it was deliberately designed for that um, but that's really good news that means controlling a gimbal is going to be great the gimbal fittings um, just here it is pre-fitted with gimbal fittings that appear to be the, the identical to a phantom and they are the same spacing as a phantom however they're a different thread size although this does come with the two little bolts to bolt the, um, the fixed GoPro mount on the bottom uh, my gimbals here that are designed for DJI phantoms do bolt onto there uh, although the ends where they come out in a circular fashion here um, just interfere with the legs so they're going to need a little bit of filing down anyway good news is a brushless camera gimbal um, of the DJI variety uh, will fit on here relatively simply uh, so that's good news anyway